Hello and welcome back. This is Habbage, and more hardcore vanilla Minecraft awaits. Glad to have you with me. Hope you enjoy this one. Um, for those who are following along, um, we just completed a, a an aquatic adventure. We kind of toured around to the... Man, excuse me. Starting with hips. It's terrible. Um, we'll get those dealt with. Um, we are enjoying a Colormatic uh, play edition. No more black and white on uh, on this playthrough. Oh no. Um, so we did close out the, the game and relaunch. I, I took a fairly quick break, but uh, to just uh, get up, stretch my legs, you know, kind of reset. Um, one thing that I'm not doing in this one, which <laughs> we'll see what, what this does for the timing of stuff, um, very often if I do multiple play sessions, uh, I go ahead and load one video in the background while I did another. But in our last video, we had a couple of pauses, and I don't know, you know, I don't know if my laptop was trying to run a few things in the background or anything like that, or if it was just loading so many additional chunks as we traveled, you know, and, and when the game has been running, even though it, it only keeps certain chunks in in ready memory um that's something i, I don't want to over push so uh we're just going to spread that out a little bit but i thought what we may do on this one as i as advertised we're going to continue on in our adventuring ways uh, oh man look at all our all our maps of our adventures are growing oh, so cool so we're uh we're off and this time I think we're going to do our overland adventure that we've we've long been talking about uh, just just to mix it up you know we we sat and, and rode in boats for a little while um, not that that's a bad thing but uh, time to time to give it another another whirl and we've we've kind of pushed you know inland a little bit more recently uh, when we were harvesting acacia trees so having done that and uh, and certainly quarried the area ahead of us here often enough we'll kind of boat past this this little area try to get back you know kind of to the edge of this bay and where the savannah wraps around and start from there and see what all else out there. I don't know if that's one of our bees that's uh, gone rogue. It's possible. We, we may see a lot more of that as time goes on, but uh, yeah, to be determined. Now, it will be a fair question whether we ever find this boat again <laughs> when we do return, but we'll give it a, our best shot. Now, I think I think when we came here, we'd more or less kind of, you know, for this last little leg, we'd more or less come uh, from the edge of this this swamp in Savannah, kind of come around this way, and only because we've we've already looped back around this hill recently, we'll, we'll kind of head back out here, and I don't I don't have a real Duff <laughs> uh, agenda for this this one. You know, there's there's not particularly a target in mind. There's biomes I'd love to find, but you can't, you know, you can't say, oh, I'm going to go find a jungle. That, that just isn't necessarily something we can control, but only by by getting out and, uh, and seeing the world do we find out what it has to offer. So we won't rule that out, but... You know, certainly we we may encounter additional villages. Uh, not that I think they're going to have a whole lot that uh, is particularly appealing to us at this point. Um, you know, maybe a 
total random chance encounter with a, a villager who happens to be a librarian and happens to be selling mending that we could lock in. We'd have to we'd have to finagle it, right? We'd have to either trade some wheat back to somebody to get some some emeralds or uh, or do something. You know, if he's if he's got another trade, use that to lock him in and then return. But I don't. That's such a long shot. I'm not uh, not too worried about it, really. I just feel like seeing seeing what's out there, and we know, you know, it, when you're first kind of that. Uh, <laughs> I, I jokingly call it the 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 uh, corny TV show that maybe you guys have heard of or seen. I think it's Discovery, or you know, or one of one of those that. Uh, don't get me started on, on History Channel. I'll, I'll rant about that as we walk, but I think it's Discovery or one of those that, you know, used to be these uh, these kind of oh yeah you know there's there's a scientific world out there and we're gonna we're gonna kind of elevate uh, television to be more educational and, and instructive and all of those channels universally when when the reality TV move began uh you know as soon as you know things I, I don't even know what was the earliest was it mtv and kind of like real world and some of those was it survivor uh you know a few things kind of happened in close succession but all of a sudden it was why on earth would we pay people to develop content when we can just have these staged you know corny scenario situation scenario situations scenario shows that call themselves reality only for the sake of we don't want to have to pay writers and uh you know in all possible respects play to the lowest common denominator it that just it makes me a little sad and mostly because when for me when the history channel first came along side note that uh, bees will be awesome in our land adventure because uh, not not really coming to grab specific resources and not seeing the the sea treasure chests we should uh should maybe be able to stock up on those anyway um <laughs> Before before I totally go into the the tangent, um, Discovery Channel has the I think has the show Naked and Afraid, which is you know like the it's kind of the cross between like Survivor Man or Survivor and Survivor Man or Bear Grylls, where they take two people uh, you know for obvious reasons a man and a woman they throw them out naked into the wilderness and then blur out, you know, blur out anything that, you know, their parts. But with that, you know, with that is the bait, throw these people together. And, you know, the, the naked probably gets a few titters and, you know, gets one curiosity view out of anybody that looks, but it's the same scenario as all the other reality TVs. You get, you recruit personalities that are abrasive and offensive. You get people who are totally averse to working cooperatively towards any ends and will usually, you know, be more focused on portraying a character and whether they're acting that or whether they're, you know, that's really just their personality and they, they happen to get selected because of it doesn't matter. You know, that's, that's what it, it comes down to. You know, can we take either somebody who's so urban that, that has not the first clue about how to endure in the wilderness and with the, you know, the allure of $10,000 or, you know, whatever minimal, minimal payout it is, get them to go out and do these kind of things or, somebody who uh who thinks they know all the answers and have something to prove so whatever the you know whatever the the stuff is that's the formula right put those people you know put those people together or put a you know a real chauvinistic man together with a a woman who is the one that's you know a, a an adventure guide or um you know forest fire or somebody who's who's real rugged and well equipped to a uh, succeed in that kind of an environment and watches the 
the unskilled but uh, but full of attitude man just you know insults repeatedly and uh, and reinforces the stereotypes that people don't you know that all people don't appreciate or all men don't appreciate women and the fact that they can be uh, skilled and you know in, in many cases based on their background or you know their aptitude or their experience more more capable in scenarios than men can be and it's silly you know right that, that's that's what helps reinforce the friction that arises in society and, and you know if, if you if you glorify those stereotypes for the conflict for people who don't have first-hand experience it can feel that way oh all people that you know you know if you're in california or new york or whatever everybody that's in montana or wyoming or colorado or utah or something they all think that that women can't do anything you know they're a bunch of uh, meat-headed you know guys that think that you know, all that matters is brute strength no that, that's couldn't be further from the truth, right? But that, you know, those messages get reinforced. So I'm not a, guess what? I'm not a big fan of, of the, you know, crafted reality TV shows. Um, I, I, you know, I get why they're, they're, they're very inexpensive to produce. And particularly, you know, if you have a writer's strike or something like that, they, uh, they kind of just are cash cows for the industry. So I get it. Um, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. And so going back, I was talking about that because first day, you know, when you're naked and afraid in, in Minecraft, as I think of it because of that show, where you don't have any gear, you know, you're just walking around. Yeah, we had a bed, but you're still you're still really just focused on those base survival elements. Um, and and getting by and making it to the next day not uh hey are there any bees around or you know hey what you know what are some of the later game things that you just don't have room in your, in your inventory for when wood and uh and some coal for torches and you know maybe a bit of iron are your your top treasures that you could find so that's not bad to re retrace but as you can see we've we've discovered this flower forest and i'm uh I'm kind of just brazenly wandering through chopping beehives where I find them. And with the mountains, it, you have to wait just a bit longer. And kind of watch the as the stars become clearly defined like that, you should be able to sleep. So there we go. Um, but I was I was talking, you know, when I I'm again it, now now a lot of you guys can put together roughly how old I am, but. Uh, I definitely um, can remember when cable channels like the History Channel came along. You know, they kind of came in the wake. Um, I, you know, I, I've said many times, I didn't have cable as a kid. My friends, you know, a lot of my friends did. Not everybody, but, you know, a lot did. So, I, you know, I was familiar with, like, Nickelodeon and stuff growing up. And MTV and all that, you know, for for folks like me and my sister who at times you know we were kids right so we we didn't get it but we were we certainly at times felt deprived that oh how can we live without mtv everybody's got mtv we can't we can't watch videos but we you know it made it it made it more of a treat when we hung out you know i had a sleepover or something hung out with friends that did and you know when you think about it if he had that and and for you know for a time in my childhood that was that was literally it like you know there were there were friends of mine that would would you do this weekend i watched mtv like you know you would just sit and they would run you know the for the it was like a top 40 radio station right you know you're not getting deep cuts and a lot of variety you're getting the the same repeated playing of of the most popular songs, but you know, this was in the era when, you know, lots of money is getting thrown into music videos. Cause that's, that's how you keep your popularity and how you sell albums is actually through the videos. Um, so it was a huge deal. So, 
MTV, you know, the, I think the weather channel was pretty early. CNN was innovative in, in just having 24 hour news and, uh, famously, um, when they first launched and it's been, it's been parodied a number of times. I think the, the Simpsons have done it certainly, but you know, a number of people, there was, there was a, a girl that, you know, had the, the, uh, the scandal is stuck, a girl stuck in a well story, you know, and they, they dispatched crews and kept that running almost nonstop as they were first getting started on this live news. And it created the, the idea that before that, you know, and it changed very rapidly. And this goes back before my lifetime, but, um, you know, bef- before television, obviously there was nothing, Be- even early television, um, most news was still news reels that would play at the beginning of movies. You know, that was, that was the, and radio, a radio of course was the, you know, the kind of live constant source of information. That was where you get the, the updates and thing. you know, and, and uh, on the brink of it or the, in the wake of a uh, state of the union address speech the other night, uh, IRL, you know, the radio was what you would rely on for those kinds of things. It was, uh, it was the, the live mass media, but with pictures, you know, obviously to start, everybody would go to movies. That was the, uh, the deal. And then obviously television, you know, replaced that not, not too quickly. There was a long period of movies before television, but when it came along, it, it became very popular and very widespread very quickly. Uh, you know, obviously that, that had a huge appeal and, there was, you know, there was all kinds of entertainment programming in early television, and news was a part of that. It uh, it had a role to play, but it it wasn't it wasn't what we would recognize a lot as as news today, because you know it would be at ten or eleven o'clock at night. And it would be, you know, first, I, I think, like 15 minutes between shows. And, you know, back in the day, even over-the-air television would turn off for the night, right? You'd, you'd run your programming in, in prime time. So, you know, whatever, I Love Lucy or the Flintstones or, you know, whatever whatever the popular programming was back then would get run in prime time. And there's not, there's not that backlog and abundance of um, rerun, you know, early on particularly, there's just not endless. Now, you know, even just creating as much YouTube content as I have, you know, it, at the beginning when you got four movie or four videos, you can go back and, and re-scrutinize all you want to. But, you know, even after a couple weeks, you've got so many hours of content out there that, you know, you can never never digest or, you know, review it all constantly, um, as you go. So either that, that pace has to slow down or it doesn't, but uh, that's where we're headed for those that saw it sticking up there. Um, in, in television, you know, it took, it took a few years to build up and even come up with the idea that people would want to see shows that had once already aired over and over again and that you could you could buy the rights to those more cheaply they're going to always have a smaller audience than when they're new uh you know kind of nobody's ever seen this before it's going to have novelty well once that goes away people will still appreciate things that they'd either seen in the past or had missed and you could rebroadcast them and until they, they kind of reached that awareness and saturation point, um, the idea of, you know, weekends and uh, overnights being filled with with produced, you know, like sitcom, you know, once that had really evolved as a, a form. You hear that skeleton, by the way? Got company. We, we're more equipped to deal with them now, though. Um, if we can see them, we'll take them out. We can't though. 
Um, so a anyway, uh, until until they had reruns, you know, a stock of all that kind of stuff just kind of laying around in the studio, right? That uh, that wasn't a deal. Another thing was the medium to hold the shows. You didn't you didn't have videotape, so a lot of the stuff was reel to reel, and because it was expensive, the studios would just trash their old stuff and record over it. You know, the, the tapes were expensive. So uh, a lot of, you know, you hear about like the lost episodes of I Love Lucy, you know, something late night TV commercials. Like, oh, you know, come see these late, these previously uh, forgotten or lost episodes. Well, the, those were things that, you know, maybe an individual had, had really liked the show and, and captured them on broadcast so they're they're not the originals but you know they had saved them themselves to have to watch again and again and it was only through those types of collections that uh that the uh you know wh whatever whether it's i love lucy or anything else you know whatever whatever that sh particular show may have been those were the only ways that they they were uh, survived into our generation to be, you know, now run or sold as, as DVD collections or that kind of stuff. But anyway, <laughs> um, until the platform reached the point where it had that much of that stuff, they had to uh, had to just find other ways to to fill the time or not. And most chose not. They just didn't bother. Okay, so I've disproved completely my old deal. Maybe they don't stack at all. Maybe we, we're now in trouble for that. Well, I may shorten up our trip a little bit. <laughs> Just a golden. Sheesh. Let's, let's do this. Well, this will be our compromise. I don't, we don't need the bones. We don't need the pressure plate. Uh, I don't even think we need the extra arrow at this point. Another golden apple. Another saddle. Um, and we'll take, take the sand because we can do this and just have, you know, we'll carry along the sandstone and some of these specialized things. Now we can, we can craft some of these, but, uh, since we previously haven't really uh, gotten into it, man, uh, I guess we're still paying for the fact that we blew up that one uh, one temple. Um, but yeah, building building with sandstone, uh, and leaving it, it just you know along the way doesn't seem quite as appealing as it was. So this is the way we'd we'd arrived. Um, we'll just kind of keep. Hugging this coastline a little bit, cruise this desert, see uh, see what else it may have to offer. Maybe climb up some of these hills. I've talked in the past about uh, about quarrying sandstone from from deserts that have mountains. You know, this is this is an example of that. The core of that mountain may be stone, but uh, you probably have a pretty good chance to pull a lot of a lot of sandstone blocks out of that. If, you know, if, if it was convenient, right? It's far, it's way too far away to make that practical. At least until we're flying and have shulker boxes. And, you know, if we've cleared every desert between here and then. But I think we, uh, we've got a lot of deserts close to home too. But yeah, you know, you may go, you may go back a bunch and there you can see there's some, some stone there. But, you know, you got a lot of, a lot of sandstone in between that's available. So that's cool. So anyway, before before there was just content to fill the airwaves in off hours, you know, they, they knew, hey, more people are going to watch between the time they get off work and the time they, you know, most everybody goes to bed than are going to watch between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. So largely they would go off the air. Uh, and even when I was a kid, some of the, you know, the local channels, at, at that point, you know, the networks and things had figured out, hey, you can, you know, you can run uh, 
infomercials as they were at that time and other other sales type programming overnight or reruns or you know whatever you can just keep selling cheap ad spots to to local businesses but you might as well be getting some money for that because they knew it, you know at first it was like who would ever watch tv in the middle of the night nobody you know people don't go to movies in the middle of the night people are sleeping in the middle of the night that's what what good people should do well what you know what became apparent pretty quickly was no actually in the middle of the night anybody who's not sleeping you know it insomnia you're sick at night you got a crying baby that won't settle down and you know you're just bleary eyed but up all night those people will actually watch anything in the middle of the night right you know they're like give me something anything to watch don't turn this off but until that point at you know at the end of broadcasting if you know if it was like 11 o'clock i think and then you know got pushed later and later but uh, the channels would, they would first run the news. Uh, they would, you know, this is the, the nightly news to let you know what's happened in the world. And it would be about 15 minutes. And it would, you know, because they didn't have radar, we've talked about the, you know, news weather, local weather and all that kind of stuff before recently so you don't need to go into too much detail there but you know they they would do a quick blur but there the you know if they had a map it was it was seriously like a poster board map of the the state or the u.s and they would have little cloud icons or sun icons and maybe some some little bands to indicate fronts and they would you know it, it was kind of like playing with the magnet boards as a kid or a felt board as a kid. I think they still have those. Um, you know, you would just move the things around on the map, you know, as static. Right? <laughs> and they, they would just have that up behind them and point to it. Sports, you know, same deal. Until, until sports began to be shown on television and, and captured. And even then, highlights and things. I, I don't know what the rights were on all that stuff early on. But there wasn't... You know, there wasn't an in-depth sports team or anything like that. There weren't a lot of, a lot of interviews. You know, the post-game interviews and things would, uh, would be done by the co- the broadcast team after the game, and then the the players they're out of the public eye, right? That, those are back in kind of the the glory days when you read about these players' lives. You know, up until the the early mid seventies or so. And, you know, certainly and I'm not saying that players are, are all angels now, but there was no, no visibility. I mean, that was back when professional athletes would smoke cigarettes. Of course, you know, the whole country did more there, you know, knowledgeable people understood that smoking was bad for you, but, uh, it didn't matter, you know, professional athletes, they, you know, after the game, both teams would go out to the bar, get burgers and, uh, and uh, drink pitchers of beer and smoke cigarettes and all that kind of stuff, and, and you know, go, go try to beat their hangovers for the next the next day's game. But uh, yeah, so there, the, you know, there was very little sports. There was very little weather. Both of those would be like a minute or two, and then whatever the newswire read, and, and it would literally be, you know, it was read the news, right? So there would be a newsman, and it was invariably a man back then would be sitting at a desk and would literally have papers in hand and read the teletype of the newswire. And, you know, here, here's the latest news from around the United States. Here's the latest news from around the world. And they're, you know, they're picking up the Associated Press or, you know, whichever of the newswire services they're covering from and, uh, and give you the news. And, you know, they may have some local stories and all that kind of stuff, but, uh, that was that was kind of about it. You know, it was it was very quick, and there wasn't enough to constitute a long format news program. And I think I, I don't know any of this for certain before my time, but I think that the the first news was maybe only about five minutes at the end of of live broadcasting for the day, and then it it eventually went up to like a fifteen minute evening news, and you know it, it may have been with something else but that that half hour base time slot wasn't even that big a deal back then oh 
look what we just found. Savor it. Ooh. Haven't seen one of those yet. This is why we're just just out wandering. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely go in here, and this will kind of break the story. But uh, it was only uh, during the Vietnam War era and you know dan rather the nightly news some of those uh, walter uh walter cronkite um some of those people you know they famously expanded the news to 30 minutes because there was so much they couldn't jam it in and it was really you know because uh outside of the newsreels of world war ii and, you know, Korea was kind of a hidden war. You know, MASH, uh, for those of us who remember it, or you may have, you know, seen it once or twice, uh, was a, a an incredibly popular sitcom after the Korean War. Um, but it uh, it actually lasted longer than, than troops were on the ground in Korea. Uh, and, and that's, again, we, we've... we've helped support the DMZ uh, in Korea ever since it's it, it the Korea conflict isn't an armistice it's never it's never fully ended um, so and I think I think that more people are aware of these days uh, with some of the recent uh, activities of North Korea and of course the Olympics and everything highlighted some of that so ooh, whoo, it's just getting better and better guys um, that's we're gonna go see what that little rock outcrop is. We need to we need to look around in here. I need to try to find some cocoa. And uh, what we'd like to do is, uh, fortunately, we don't have to worry about carrying back melons or bamboo. We've got all that. Um, but we we'll get to see one of these awesome structures. And we'll probably take coordinates here. These are fun to to coordinate. You know, if it's not uh, if it's not just um, for exploration, they're kind of fun to make into a a home. You know, in our case, a vacation home maybe or a base. Uh, but this is the jungle temple. Uh, once. Uh, one of the few generated structures, one of the older ones in the game, uh, that you could you could discover out in the world, and this is is very much in the spirit of uh, of Indiana Jones stuff. So um, you want to come in and you know be be cautious as you're moving around. And to do that, we'll first light up to uh, try to keep things from spawning above our heads. Do uh, I would imagine that most most people do, but do do young adults and kids still watch uh, watch Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark? I'm glad that hasn't been remade yet. I mean, the, there's. There was a lot of outcry when they did uh, Crystal Skull. You know, how dare they? I don't remember the code here. <laughs> People may, may be upset. So we it, savvy watchers will notice, hey, with some vines and stuff down there, there's a, uh, a little hole in the wall. And if you... Look closely. You can't really see it above, but you know, look at the floor, and you can you can see it's got a double high little box. So this is a trip wire, and when you break it, twang. Uh, I didn't see it go through, but an arrow shoots down, and and those arrows are not particularly pleasant and there's also some redstone here on the ground and these were these were some of the first applications of um, redstone and uh, these are droppers droppers right I think um, and automating you know some of these things it was a way to put into the vanilla game 
uh, some of the functionality that had been built. So, very cool. I we can try. There's a is it down, up, down. So many games, so many codes. I don't know. Usually I just end up breaking through. And I, here's the other tripwire here. So, if we just hang back and I'd break it by stepping in it. That time, at least he saw the arrow go through. And so there, there it crosses. Now, we'll just pick all these up. So we've got got one treasure chest here, right? And it has mainly bleh, right? You know, and tripwire hooks. We don't we don't need them particularly. Um, we can put some of those things up. We haven't yet gotten any of the mossy cobble. And I don't think we can avoid it completely. But when you correctly manipulate the switches, and I'm not going to, you know, look them up to pretend. They will... Where's the... Here we go. So there's a hidden treasure chest, and they'll like the correct sequence, which I don't, I don't know offhand. Obviously, will move the deal. What a bunch of garbage! Not a, not a particularly. Oh, because I maybe that's because I cheated. Uh, I think maybe that's it. But yeah, this was some of the, the first use of sticky pistons to, to move a wall and show that. You know, doors could be moved, the trip wires and everything. I, again, I don't know how how close everything had been uh, had been timed, but uh, yeah, these were uh, these were some early implementations in game of of some cool cool technologies and stuff that were coming. So very good stuff. I'm gonna leave the iron here. I think as well. We got so much iron back home. We don't need a bunch of it. Um, what I am going to do is sleep. Let's go upstairs. Kind of make this a uh, chill. And then I'm going to grab the coordinates because uh, this is something we want to be able to get back to, certainly. So we'll just uh, bear with me here one second as I pull this up. And this is going to be jungle temple and that is 1397 and negative 2045 all right as again i i'm not bothering to put those in front of the video <laughs> we'll we'll refrain um i i don't want to uh don't want to risk that now. Yeah, creepers in the jungle are are a real thing. They they will do their best to kind of intermix with the rest. Now I think we'd approached. We'd kind of come in over there and approached up this way. Jungle, I mean, you guys probably are like, man, you get lost, you know, on an open ocean. What, what are you talking about? But jungles are are particularly easy to get turned around in. Uh, you know, there's so much of this ground cover bushes, and we'll, we'll kind of see, see that, uh, that they... Uh, they can do this now. This seems like a, a chalk with uh, with salmon river. We haven't seen one of those since our Hondo world. And this is a good. Oh, they just kind of laughed at me. They're like, oh, "You're going to talk about how it's easy to get us on one deep water and kill us." But maybe let's let's just grab a stack of raw in case we see some villages with cats on our journeys. Uh, this is awesome, man. Yeah, jungle temple in a jungle. I didn't have any 
real, you know, awesome. I, 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 one of my favorite old memory, you know, kind of features of of the vanilla Minecraft game. But not not one that has a whole lot of use. Like I said, cool place to build a base, and especially if you you know you early in your game find a jungle close to spawn, and are fortunate enough to have a uh, a temple in it. I, I've had some awesome worlds where that's been kind of my home to start, and uh, when. I definitely recommend that as a, a fun world type and biome to live in. Um, you know, you get... Come on, stupid fish, you're making me look bad. Um, you get so much resource um, out and around you uh, just you know, for the taking. So much wood. Um, uh, pods will be all around in here, too, I think. I think it just kind of grows wherever, whether it's big trees or not. But, uh, yeah, it has to, to get the, the big jungle trees. So, there's lots of podzel out there that you can uh, can gather up. And, uh, you know, you can, you can make your farms, lots of, you know, melons and all that kind of stuff to start with. So, I love starting a world there. But it the temple will give you the opportunity to... Uh, kind of survive as you're trying to clear the ground. Wow, I just got a weird weird audio thing with my own voice. I don't know what that was. Hmm. Hope, hope everything's alright. Let's check the levels. Test, 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 test. I see the little bar going. I see desktop audio, but we don't have anything going. Let's, uh, let's go back to the game. It's E... Well, it'll play some music again. Shouldn't be... Okay, yeah, so everything looks good. All right, back to it. It's just been been weird. But yeah. Oh, parrots? Uh, are we ready to try to get a parrot back? Parrots are wonderful. Coco, we need this. Parrots. Awesome. Come in a variety of colors. You look like a blue guy. Uh, you train them or tame them with seeds. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we're ready for the trolliness, though. You guys are going to hear me freaking out. Um, so, like in the real world, parrots are mimics. Um, they will mimic the sounds of other birds primarily, but, you know, it sounds within their environment and nature. They'll, they have the vocal ability to, uh, to kind of recreate those and, um, you know, through, through whatever the, uh, the avian, uh, appeal is, they will... Uh, use that vocal ability to attract mates. Come on. Ah! Now, you can make them sit and stand, and there's a way. Uh, how do you get them on your shoulder? Do they just do that? I don't know. You know, they, they should kind of follow around. Now, is he sitting? Okay, yeah, you're coming. Get on my shoulder. Do you just crouch beside them when they're flying and then they'll maybe hop on? There we go. Okay, now what is it? F3? No, F5? There. Look at that. He even matches my armor. So now we got a parrot on our shoulder. Now, I don't know when he... When or why or how he would take off. But, uh... Oh, you look so good, don't you? Yeah. Oh, you're awesome. The other guy wants to be a friend, too, but I don't have any more seeds. And honestly, until we, uh, until we <laughs> really get equipped, it, more, it, they just get, I mean, they have that unique ability to drive you insane with all their, you know, dogs barking and stuff is one thing. See, now he's off my shoulder, but he should more or less follow us. It'll be a long shot if he gets all the way back home. 
I don't know how to how to really do well. The best chance you have is to uh, get them in a boat and then uh, and then follow follow you that way. Okay, there, now we're back to our jungle temple again. I think. Um, I guess we could put him in there. Do you want to come on the adventure, or do you want... No, we got name tags back home. I want to name you. Um, so, yeah. Well, we'll just venture on. Now Now that we've found parrots, which I totally just spaced. You don't... Parrots, you can't breed. Uh, unlike all the other animals, uh, parrots are just out there. You, you know, you can give them as many seeds as you want if you've got two of them tamed. They won't ever have baby parrots. That's fine. Um... <laughs> it is ironic because the, uh, I don't know if it's changed, but the initial, uh, oh, careful, the initial breeding animals achievement, at least, I don't know if the advancement ever was, used to be called the parrots and the bats, you know, an allusion to the birds and the bees. And the fact that it's the parrots and the bats, and they're two animals that do not breed in Minecraft. is kind of silly. It's just like, uh, um, okay, you have bees that can breed, uh, birds that won't, and you know you could make this make this kind of truer to the the saying. Um, as I go around here, I'm looking for bamboo groves, and we've talked about in way you know other worlds early ones the biome advancement um to see all the different biomes so there's a few in jungles uh, you know there's like a jungle hills there's a jungle and we should be we should be looking a little i'm sure that we've at least seen one other jungle i don't think we saw the bamboo ever but i think we at least got in to see jungle uh, jungle edge i think is one jungle hills is one uh, there's a variety, and you want to kind of keep track. Oh, there's an ocelot. We're totally ill-equipped to team ocelots. They're one of the more challenging animals, but we can sit up here and observe him in his in his natural habitat. He stalks the prey. I think I told the story of of once once upon a time I had a world with this awesome little chicken farm. <laughs> it was uh. You know, much much like the chicken farm we have here, uh, just you know the fence square kind of deal. And but it, you know it was just great. I made a home in a jungle and uh, was getting to you know kind of this this type range, right? You know, oh, oh, that's so that's parrots. Parrots will mimic stuff, and they like to mimic the monsters and just wait until he starts in with the creeper sizzle. Oh my goodness. You're pretty much signing up to uh, to troll yourself when you have a pet parrot. But, uh, that's all right. It's worth it. He's cute. And he's blue. Um, you can find him in red, white, red, gray. It's gray or white. Maybe both. I don't know. There's a blue one, a green one, a red one, a uh, yellow one, maybe? I don't know. Lots of, lots of colors. Five, I think. Um, I'm trying to find a way... Uh, into the east that doesn't involve me plunging to my death. <laughs> Was that a door? You just making fun of me? Like, oh, that's what you sound like in the morning when you haven't had any coffee and you try to talk into the mic. There we go. At least something. Uh, at some point here, we'll want to sleep, like now. Yeah, you're doing great at keeping up, Parrot. Keep doing that. I'd love to get you all the way home. And we are filling up with stuff, so that's not impossible. All right, now we need to... Uh... Okay, that's east. That's it's that waking up that always gets gets you tur gets me turned around, at least. You know you guys. Well, yeah, whatever. I know how to play Minecraft. I don't. I don't get lost. Oh, I wanted to catch that vine. Swing like Tarzan. Didn't work. Um, now we got to get back up. As I said, jungle is is awesome. Uh, I think it's one of the coolest 
environments that they've created, but uh, challenge to to navigate. Not only because it's got all this ground cover, but also because it, the terrain goes up and down. Oh, I was supposed to keep this up so we could keep looking to see if we get the various biomes. Uh, and I know that's... I, I hate having it up because I am scared <laughs> of things amid all this green. Green particular mobs uh, that may just be lurking around the next corner and unseen. Um... Yeah, no, if I could trust you, Mr. Parrot, to tell me, I'd feel a lot better about it, but I don't. Jungle Hills. All right, so that's another. We've gotten at least two. Um, the Jungle Edge, I think, is the one of the two tough, and then, or three, really, because then there's two bamboo variants that we're hoping this jungle has. And again, this is why I know I... I think we found a little bit of jungle, either in World 1 or 2, uh, where we had reason to talk about this. Or, but it could have just been talking about biomes in general. I don't remember. Uh, but I know we never found bamboo. So, and this is a part of why I think it's dangerous to be cruising in these jungles. I was going to maybe go back for that cocoa, but not. You can fall off off some of these low trees and underbrush and get stuck in a hole just as a creeper is appearing. Hey, chicken! Um, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, I think that's just the lower stone below a cliff over there. And again, I, I don't have any real direction. You know, it, it's jungle, right? Just you know, if you were in South America, like Indiana Jones, and, and cruising through the Amazon, you need to, you know, you, you could go all the way around the edge, right? And you're just going to see kind of a wall of foliage. Um, or you can pick a straight line through, and you'll, you know, you'll kind of see what you hack, and, you know, you get your machete out and kind of chop your way through. You'll see what you pass by immediately, but it's it's very difficult to see, you know, comprehensively what's around you. So you, part of the fun of a jungle, for me at least, is you, at times you got to climb up, you got to kind of periscope around, see is it still extending in whatever direction you're going, if you want to stay inside it, does it, uh, you know, does it have an edge? But what you're really looking for is whole clumps of bamboo. Uh, those would indicate that you've uh, gotten to one of the, the couple of bamboo biomes in jungle. I'm just going to, you know, we'd, we'd kind of come into this from the south, or, you know, what I guess would be the the southwestern corner of the jungle. And so as we're heading east, you know, if that's expanding back the way we came and getting bigger in that direction... I, I want to kind of keep that visible and aware of it. Now, sometimes you'll get, you know, kind of river river incursions uh, that are dried out like this that give you a little break. It's nice. Um, don't fall into caves along the edge. Uh, what the river would be nice is if it gave us a little bit of jungle edge <laughs> biome. Hills, more hills. I think I think you have to be at a perimeter edge, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Um, you know, we just want to keep looking up, looking down. The uh, the darker of the cocoa beans are just uh, true. <laughs> I'm looking over. I'm seeing the the red true and false. They're they're just true or false. Uh, the darker ones are the most mature, and so when you're growing cocoa, um, you wait until they get that dark to harvest. When you just see them in the wild, you might as well grab those. You know, if you're if you're not just grabbing everything. And how many? Oh, only not quite half a stack. 
Um, but yeah, as you go, you uh, you may want to let them grow up to you know be the the full dark and in your farm. <laughs> I don't remember where all I was in that. At home, that's full maturity. You you can then harvest out here. You can leave the you know leave the younger ones if you want to, or or grab everything. But the darker ones will offer you more little cocoa beans per per broken pod than the light colored ones. I think you know I think these green ones may not give you anything, and then the the kind of middle yellowish ones give you uh, give you just one maybe. You know, kind of like potatoes or beets or something you know you may get one back uh, if you harvest them early so um still kind of going you know we if we go back that way we'd cut in i think well before as far as we've worked our way back um but we're just kind of skirting this edge and you know this could and, and that's by design. The jungle biomes can be massive. They're, you know, the jungle is one of the terrain types that constitutes a large part. You know, for, unfortunately, a shrinking part, but a large part of the Earth's uh, biosphere. So um, that's that's reflected in the fact that when the game generates jungles, they can be a massive biome, like Snowy Taiga and, you know, some of those that um, once, they can be very difficult to find because they're, they're a rarity, but when you find them, they can be very large and offer lots of gameplay as you, you kind of explore them. And, you know, we're not going to get all of this one in one trip, certainly, but uh, now that we know it's here, and once we once we have more see be careful you don't want to fall into a, a submerged lake or something um not that that by itself is death but uh then if a, a monster finds you by the time you can you know find an edge and chop your way out through three four deep leaves uh they can be on top of you so be careful um so we're still checking our biomes we're still wandering through seeing what all's out here or listening to our wonderful parrot which we're thinking of your name i am at least again um salty is salty not only because of the his propensity for hanging out in the sea um but for his uh uh well, salty in regard to slow cooker, you know, that salty is a, a seasoning, right? So, salt. Um, so that, you know, it's a, a food word that um, makes some sense. So, I thought that had appeal. So, you know, something that parrot in and of itself, I've never eaten parrot. I don't know if anybody does and wouldn't encourage it, I don't think, just, you know, without... Without somebody saying, yeah, that's, that's some good eating, that parrot. Um, so, uh, I, I don't think we're just, you know, going to call him parrot as a food, but uh, what, what he might be, it could be, could be his color, you know, he's blue and yellow and green. Does that bring anything to mind? Not really. Um, ideally, when I cook, I don't like things to turn blue. Green, you know, green eggs and ham, that's something. Uh, and habbage uh, is a contraction made of ham. There's something there, but it doesn't exactly fit with slow cooking. Um, the greenness of your eggs is usually a result of sitting after and can be the, the rate at which they cool after uh how how green and or gray they get uh, when they cut and fun fun food fact of the day bum, bum, bum. maybe we need to get a sound effect you know one of those little button sounds that uh that you can play throughout um maybe we need one for fun food facts when you hard boil eggs and i eat, I eat 
a relatively lot of eggs, much much more than I used to. Um, and I, I get it, you know, there's there's some cholesterol risks. You don't want to uh, don't want to be overly uh, burned. But when you're when you're watching the prepared, uh, pre-packaged and pre-prepared foods that you consume. Amazingly enough, you know, things like cholesterol and uh, and blood pressure and some of those kind of things, your fats and all that, really become much less of a concern because you're, you know, you're eating uh, all natural foods and if you prepare them yourselves, you're controlling how much seasoning, you know, how what types of fats you use to cook in um, and those kind of things. So it, you can, when, you know, when people, and, and these are fad-like things a little bit, you know, I remember as a kid, it was one of the first ones that I was really kind of aware of, was eggs, you know, at times in my childhood were awful, you know, eggs were evil, and eggs were chock full of cholesterol, and you shouldn't eat eggs, and then, you know, through, uh, through response to that, or I don't know what, the you know egg farmers of America or whatever excuse me more more hiccupy type things um, but you know that that began the incredible edible egg campaign that some people may remember okay now we're looking for a jungle edge and I kind of pushed pushed back in this direction to see if we could get one because I think that's one of the biomes right if we see it, then we'll know, and then we're good. Okay, well, we're definitely at the edge. Um, I don't know. One of these is one of these jungles is is tough, and clearly, if it's the edge, that's that's why it's tough. It doesn't exist every. Oh, oh, did we? Just, yeah, there we go. Check. So we've seen that one. Good. Um, so now, what do we, what do we want to do? We've crossed a big amount. First of all, yeah, we're, we're going to get rid of that for now. Cause I think those are the, those are the three base jungle, um, biomes. So we've seen those, um, and the bamboo are going to be noticeable when we see them. Um, you know, and then we can, we can look around, you know, if we find bamboo, then we can, can kind of thoroughly explore those to see if we get both or if, the, you know, there's one that we're still looking for. And I, I think those two are hills and just, uh, it's like, uh, bamboo forest maybe, is that what it is? Uh, you know, that's why I keep a list. I, I can check, but I'm... We've learned our lesson about opening notepads into the uh, the stream or the video. Um, clearly, we're not going to get back from this adventure in any one episode. We're already just at an hour, and you know we're I, I don't know how far we are, close we are uh, in terms of physical distance halfway, but um, this this is going to be a multi episode trek and i think you know kind of as a a starting point just to you know what we'll what we'll do we'll maybe try to hey b uh you got a hive around here i didn't know hives popped in jungles but maybe you came from just outside it i don't know not too worried um that will maybe, you know, kind of try to get a feel for the perimeter of this jungle on on this adventure. As you can see, you know, it's it's going off into the north. Whoa, hey, birch trees. That's interesting. And maybe maybe has some of these little fingers because you know we see it going off to the north here. And that, again, awesome. Why? Why? I love Minecraft. It it doesn't just go in in rectangles of you know this is 
this is the edge, and now you know you're going to go to something else. No, 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 you, you kind of can be surprised. And, and, you know, they may just have little offshoots that, you know, a little bit of area that sticks into another biome. Ooh, you're fast when you're teleporting, birdie. So, uh, what might we call our bird? What might we name you? I don't know, but we got a name tag waiting back at home. Man, I love jungle trees when they're just, you know, there's one massive one sticking up. So cool. Well, hello, somebody. Oh, maybe that was her. Her? Maybe you're a she. She bird? She bird? Seabird? She bird? No, nothing ocean. But maybe jungle. Um, I would never slow cook a plantain, I don't think. At least I don't think I would. But uh, having had oh, guava. Would you like to be guava? Yeah, that was my story. Uh, was that in the last episode? Maybe it was. But uh, I'm certainly still thinking about guava. And that's a fun food. Um, it's native to more tropical parts than uh, than my homes throughout my life. So maybe that would be cool. What do you think? Probably not going to work. But oh, ho, ho, Tarzan. Me Tarzan. Um, yeah, I don't know. Guava, key lime. Yeah. Both, again, not not likely to find their way into a slow cooking pot, but I think, you know, for the purposes of naming stuff, we can expand a little bit into food as a water category. Um, I, I, so far, I think guava's the, the, the name to beat, birdie, but... If you want something different, you better inspire me quick. Or at least, you know, quick in the sense of hours of gameplay before we get uh, get back home to our name tags and our anvil. Yeah, even if we find an anv uh, a name tag somewhere in our wandering, we're not going to be able to apply it until we get an anvil. Oh, see, there's a red one. They're cool, too. More of a macaw look. Hey. Uh, but like I said, we got one. Uh, we don't need to try to try to juggle more of them on a long walk adventure. If we uh, if we make a home, uh, you know, a vacation home, and I, you know, we were talking about snowboarding earlier too, and that's that's a thing. Maybe we, you know, not that our our home is entirely chilly landscaped, but. Uh, Maybe we, you know, just need a, a little change of pace every once in a while. Now, of course, we we can't start talking about that too much. We we haven't even gotten settled into our own home, but always good to plan for the future. I wanted to get up this hill, get a panoramic view. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of vines, not a ton of bamboo nothing at least that that yet makes me push in I think we're still still pretty jungly here to the side and, and back behind us so we won't cut in oh is that it? no maybe not nope I'm going to tell myself no I just saw that open hillside and those vines and I thought that was bamboo-y I don't think so. Again, sort of surprisingly, I th I thought we would have more pods all around, but I guess I guess that's not a deal. I'm gonna assume that was just you, just you messing with me. And like I said, he he hasn't even started with the creeper sizzle yet. So just wait, and uh, and no. No offense to the uh, the female viewers. Uh, it's it's much more about tonal and octaveness for a uh, an adult man. But uh, you'll know when you hear me scream like a girl. Uh, you know, falsetto. Oops. Um, <laughs> that uh, that it's happening. 
Because, yeah, you know, and they're invariably, they're right behind you when they do it, and then just, and you're like, oh, oh no. I mean, the only, the only right reaction is to react as if a creeper is about to, to blow up on you and take your world. In hardcore, yeah you kind of have to, right? You know, you can't just, you can't just be, oh, whatever, you know, it's a creeper, maybe it gets me. Um, so it, it adds a, a fun little twist to the game, it keeps you on your toes, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, see, I, I love how, you know, not only does this just stick out, but there's just these couple little trees that stick back into another biome at the edge, and, you know, you can kind of see the planes have really inserted themselves into uh, into the jungle, you know? And it, was this a, a past village or something that did some foresting and, and you know, kind of slash and burn the jungle? And it may take a long time for it to, uh, it to recover. Oh, see how he jumps on my shoulder for the bed? Cats do that, too, when you sleep. They'll give you presents, actually. Hey, buddy! Guava. Uh, it, it really blue shouldn't be the guava parrot either but that's what's that's what's hitting me and if i spread a knowledge of guava to any viewers that have maybe never heard of it and maybe you you just kind of are aware and sometimes hear of it as an item in a, a a dish at a restaurant or something maybe give it a try maybe you see some out somewhere um, I, I would love to be an ambassador for the guava fruit or guava jelly industry, if there is such a thing. Okay, so it looks a little bit like this is limited by a desert in the opposite direction. Um, but we'll, we'll just kind of see how, you know, how far does this go? Maybe, hey, there's another of your, of your blue buddies. Oh, is, is this a darker blue one? Where are you? Yeah, look, you're that's a dark blue guy. So that's one of the colors. But you're you're multicolored. You're awesome, Guava. So, I I think we got to kind of extend out with this finger. Uh, there's there's some stuff back and obviously the bulk of our our jungle is back behind us, but uh I think we're going to keep on on Push. That was close. I wanted to make sure I got to the water. Um, we're gonna keep on pushing on. See, you know, if if one little tendril of jungle, tendril is a good word because there's viney stuff that grows with tendrils in jungles. Um, yeah, that would be uh be great. How many people have? have been to a real jungle or maybe you live you know in it, you know you may not be way back in the midst of it probably be tough to have reliable internet and one if, if you're so fortunate don't uh maybe don't spend so much time watching random youtube videos i'm just saying you <laughs> you live in something that makes the rest of the world jealous i think and and i i know you know Living in a jungle takes a very unique skill set. There's the grayish one. So we're seeing all the various birds out here. Um, but yeah, I, I'm i trying to think. I, you know, I, I've been to representations of jungles, but true jungle, I don't think I've ever traveled to or been in. Um, I've been... Certainly in the southeastern United States, you know, mangrove and cypress type swamps, things like that are, to me, you know, feel very, very reminiscent of a jungly environment when you get, you know, big palmettos growing, you know, and spread out and, you know, a lot of creeper type vines and, and moss and stuff growing down from the trees you know all, every the various levels of of the forest grow together and uh deep and dark underneath i've, I've had wonderful times in in louisiana uh, actually by myself just uh on trips where i was going to meet friends in new orleans but you know had an extra day and and just went and uh 
and found some nature preserves and things that right you know rightfully were not heavily populated when when i was going in there it was some you know august day just dripping humidity uh not the time that the locals were even thinking about being outdoors but it was my chance and i you know i had my camera and all that and was uh happy to uh to make the most of my opportunity um but yeah you know it, it's it's such a cool not creepy but again you guys you guys know my my deal for snakes and you know in the in the arid country you know a lot of people think rattlesnakes in the desert and all that kind of stuff and i you know certainly I, i've gotten used to those and while they're incredibly well adapted to their environment and camouflaged you know you your greatest danger is stepping on them without noticing and, and getting bit that way whereas if you you know you just see them in the path ahead of you and wait they'll move out of your way they they don't want to deal with a big predatory looking animal thing that uh, could could do them harm so they'll usually just you know go on about their business but uh you know right or wrong <laughs> and how likely you are to see them or not blending into sand and underbrush and stuff in my own habitat those swampy kind of you know thick vegetation uh damp type forests make me think you know all right cotton mouth you know copperheads all all those kinds of snakes what what might there be out there waiting to uh to give me fits so um those pieces make it kind of you know it, it's not sp- I don't, I don't really get spooked by four, you know, I, I know a lot of people think they're spooky from a, you know, kind of a scary movie type sense too. I, I don't get any of that, but, um, but I, I marvel at them. But I, that being said, you know, I, I haven't been in a place where, um, you know, there, there's been, you know, like any of the African or, or South American indigenous species or, or Asian jungle, uh, species that, that I would have a chance to encounter um, some of the islands in the Caribbean and uh, Mexico. You know, if you get off the beach away from the the tourist resorts, you pretty quickly are, are in their own habitat of. Uh, is it technically jungle? I'm not sure, but you know, it, it doesn't take much inland to uh, to feel that you know kind of oppressive humidity oh creeper um excuse me cow yeah i saw you buddy i'm worried that you have friends um there you go Again, reasons to uh, to be watchful in the jungle. Uh, they're they're my Minecraft representation of snakes. Well, let me just check the direction, see if I'm uh, I'm still going the way I thought it was. I am. So that's cool. Again, we you know we're I don't think we're anywhere too far from that that southern edge. It's now switched over to a spruce forest taiga. Um, so that's, that's something. Um, I'd like to find, <laughs> find the limits and curve back around. Um, but yeah, in in some of the the Caribbean and uh, Mexican areas, you know, I've had the good fortune to see. Oh, iguanas, you know, some of those kind of things out and about. Um, in Louisiana, I've seen uh, Nutria. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. It's been a number of years, but uh, kind of a, uh, a rodent in in the swamps. You know, kind of. It, it, for those of you guys who know the Princess Bride, think R U U S S. Uh, her R-O-U-S's. Um, can't just drop there. Um, 
was, I've seen uh, I, I, when I was in my uh, Louisiana adventure, I also saw a. Um, oh, this may be a disaster, but I think yeah, I can I can fall between the gaps and still just drop nicely like that. Come on, tree. You kidding me? You're so good until you get all the way down there, and then you just float. Don't like that. Um, and we're still going east. That's good. Uh, yeah, so some kind of an otter type thing, too. And I, I don't know entirely what that was. You know, if it's just straight up river otter like anywhere else or what. But I saw that swimming along in, uh, in a waterway. That was in... All this was, you know, in the uh, New Orleans Baton Rouge area. I, I probably I have notes somewhere on on all these things, but uh, I, I know, you know, I'd I'd gone in a day ahead of my friends, gotten into the hotel and all that, you know, spent like half a night, and then was up at uh, two, three a.m. and I. I cruised up towards Baton Rouge out of New Orleans, and somewhere along the way, uh, there was a you know a wildlife habitat or you know I don't know preserve type thing, and that was more foresty, but you know certainly alive with with waterways and and all that good stuff. Um, Okay, we're just, we're just gonna chill. We're gonna let some lava bubble, I guess, catch up a little bit with the world. It's fine. I uh, just saw something running on the system. <laughs> there we go. I don't know why I'm with the the Microsoft window. So it's not it's not the game itself. The Microsoft window again. I don't know why I struggle so much with those, but. Um, it twice while I was doing that, I was looking and on my taskbar down at the bottom, it's popping, you know, some kind of a window, which I assume is, you know, like a a Windows health check or, or something like that that's running that's causing those little periodic things. And that's fine. You know, I, we can deal with that as long as it doesn't happen at the exact wrong moment. Now, this is potentially a significant uh, development. We have jungle, and as far as I know, man, this would be a nice time to have wings. You could just pop up and, and kind of scan this. As far as I know, this is a new, or, you know, at least unlinked jungle, and it could just be a little pocket of it. Uh, I think we'll just kind of kind of keep going here. Um, see what we have. Um... Yeah, we're just just wandering, talking about jungles. So anyway, I'd gotten up, uh, you know, middle of the night, unknown city. I I think I'd been to New Orleans prior to that visit, but um, never outside the city, and uh, and never, you know, not with. I I've got one good friend who who grew up there, um, and so you know he kind of always plays host, but uh, it's really a, a group of. Uh, some some college friends, some you know newer acquaintances, but we all uh, have played fantasy football for years. And New Orleans has been kind of a repeated uh, repeated destination draft location. Since we're all scattered around the country, we uh, we like to try to get together every year and uh, do a draft. You know, everybody assembles and uh, fun ensues. And New Orleans is a great city for that. Um, the it used to be, you know we would at least every other year and for the first few years you know we did it i think pretty exclusive we go to vegas you know, oh yeah vegas 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 is party town you know we can draft we got sports books and everything and, and the first few years that we were doing it nobody nobody was even really aware that people would travel or get together for fantasy football purposes again we're kind of waiting between here um so that was interesting, you know, and a challenge. More lava, so maybe that's the bubbling and the particles and all that are, are getting us. But again, I don't, I don't really think it's the game that's struggling by itself. Uh, sorry, I'm combining two things. Processing the, the 
couple of pauses we've had, and this is one where we could get trapped if we had stuff coming out of both of those caves. And, you know, we'll deal with monsters as we see them, but I'd rather, rather look for bamboo. So... Yeah, I, you know, I'd been into the city, kind of had a... I, I have a, believe it or not, from watching some of this Minecraft play, I, I have a pretty good aptitude when I, you know, when I'm in a city or moving around without really having to focus on it. I I get a pretty good feel, and it's it's kind of what leads me astray at times. You know, when you, when you feel pretty confident that you know where you're at, and, you know, the kind of compass in your head keeps you, you kind of feeling like, okay, yeah, you know, I, I may not know what's between me here and there, but I know, you know, my hotel is back that way. And, and pretty much without a lot of fail, I'm good on that. Um, and, you know, I, I try to remain humble enough when I'm in unfamiliar places that, you know, I, I will. Back in the day, it would carry a map or, you know, nowadays you just make sure that your phone has, you know, connection to cell or, or internet service. And that's one of those things when, you know, when you're going into like a swamp or something like that, if it's a nature preserve, understand that, you know, you may not have cell coverage for all that. So don't just trust to a phone when you, uh, ooh, <laughs> when you, uh, jump off a tree. Um, uh, no, when you're, when you're out, you know, it, go exploring it, it, you know, if I could, encourage people to do one thing let's go explore the world i, I say it between most every episode uh, get outside and, and see this world but we all only get one one chance to uh to explore it so make the most of that um you never know when you'll get another opportunity or you know even if you think it's a place that uh that you uh, really enjoy and want to you know want to see a lot you may never get back there or it may be decades and it may have changed so Take those opportunities when you get a chance or make those, you know, if you're, if you're taking the trip for work or with your family or whatever, try to build in the opportunities to go explore beyond just the, you know, in my mind, the, the touristy stuff. And as I was saying about Vegas, that's, that's one of the reasons is we all, you know, as a group got a little bit older, we, we still will go back to Vegas every once in a while, although we haven't been in a long time and we, we may not make it. It, it, when we do, it's, it's a nod to the, the trial, uh, the travel ability. Um, we got friends on the West Coast. I have a friend in Hawaii that you know, most often comes back. Um, and it, getting to Vegas from anywhere in the country is pretty easy. There's usually cheap flights and regular ones. So it works out well in that sense. But uh, New Orleans has such character and such appeal that it's a, it's a very close second for the number of times that we've been there. And, uh, you know, then you add in the music and the culture and the, the, the genuine food Vegas does very well, you know, it has a lot of different types of restaurants, some very top notch, um, but it's, you know, it's all kind of artificial, right? You know, you're, you're getting a French restaurant, uh, that's, you know, it's just trying to be there in Vegas and be available and be another draw. So you, you feel that kind of. Uh, I don't mean to be as, as condescending as it sounds, but, you know, it's a little contrived or concocted, right? It's, oh, this is our our latest reason to bring you here is to get something that you could get, you know, authentically in New Orleans, but we'll make a, we'll make a Cajun style top notch restaurant in, in Vegas. And, and yeah, you get the appeal that then, you know, one night you can do, can do Cajun, and the next night you can do, uh, I don't know, Indian food or something like that. I, I don't know, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, so anyway, um, I, uh, I think I was talking about, so on my, my own solo kind of nature adventures in Louisiana, which consist largely of one or two mornings. I don't remember. I think there were two different days. Uh, that I was there kind of solo doing photography. So one, I had gone all, you know, up all the way to or past or around in the area of Baton Rouge and then gone into this this kind of preserve. I don't know if it was a state park or, you know, what it was. It didn't 
it was just really a, a parking lot on the side of the road and uh, some trails. It didn't have, you know, a gate or visitor center or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I set off to, to wander with my camera and my binoculars and uh, saw some awesome birds that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't get to see around here and not just, you know, the coastal stuff. I saw some beautiful spiders and spider webs, uh, orb weavers, I believe is the classification, uh, but you know, big honking spiders and just sitting in the middle of these just gorgeous webs. So that was unexpected and, and really cool, uh, on that particular adventure, something that I remember and stand out. Um, and then, um, you know, I'd done, done more back towards uh, New Orleans itself uh, in some other little wildlife uh, areas and parks. And one had a boardwalk through, you know, a, a flooded cypress swamp. I got to check direction. Yeah, that's still east. Um, so, um yeah, and it was on there. It was in there. That was more the palmetto groves, and you know some of the the uh, aquatic animal, you know, uh, mammal species, uh, the rodent and the the otter. I don't know what otters are classified as in terms of uh, their family, but uh, I saw those back, you know, down another park. But that, I think that was the same day. And man, by the time I got back. It was just, you know, you, you'd go into these places and the shade of the trees makes it so dark, but the, the humidity and the, the same trees that are shading it are also preventing any hint of breeze. And this is another thing that's hit me, uh, in Mexico and the Caribbean is, you know, especially, you know, a <laughs> fun thing to do in the islands that I, you know, I, I would never really do at home, especially now, you know, now, you know adult middle-aged man uh you're cruising around you're not going to get a, on a hop on a scooter and and tear around town you know your friends might see and all that but uh fun thing to do on the islands you know go go rent a scooter make sure you know make sure that the people aren't setting you up with either <clears throat> something that's going to break down immediately you know good idea to have kind of a group in those kinds of uh settings but uh yeah um fun way you know you're not usually gonna have a rental car you know and, and this is kind of in that context of a a resort type vacation in the islands right you know people people want to enjoy the beaches and all the you know uh all-inclusive food and all that kind of stuff at a resort but you still you know i, I always feel if i'm doing that I'm not the person that wants to just stay on a resort, no matter how how well done it is or how nicely the they serve you, that kind of stuff. I want to go see as much of the community I can get to. And if I can get to um, an authentic part, then uh, I'm all the happier. You know, meet, meet people outside of where they just kind of funnel you as tourists. And, and I don't mean that in the offensive. You know, I don't want to say, oh, yeah, I'm... I'm going to break your code, you know, and get out. But um, in, in a lot of places that are heavily tourist industries, and I can say I can say this from a Colorado perspective, maybe to make it sound less, you know, here in the mountains, we know, you know, right around the resorts and, and in certain towns, everything is designed for the ski tourist. You know, or in the summer, you know, mountain bikes or the hikers and that kind of stuff. And it's it, it's corporate in a ski industry corporate. You know, the the same big companies that own resorts here in Colorado also own resorts in you know Western Canada and the, you know Northern New York and some of those. You know, those are all uh, tried and true owners that have lots of resources and, you know, they, they have a formula, it works and they can offer people from Europe and Asia or, you know, all across the United States and Canada, they're coming to ski a, a kind of pre, pre-shaped experience that is, is designed to satisfy the widest number of customers. And that's great. You know, that there's lessons for the kids. There's a, uh, you know, predictable bread bowls of of 
chili in the lodge that you know people can eat from and it's filly and hearty and it's kind of what you think of with winter and that you know that kind of stuff all just goes together so good for them you know i, I think that's it, it's best to serve the needs of the most customers that's what keeps them in business and but here here in colorado you know we know that the the local places the mom and pop little restaurants that are you know maybe maybe a few miles away that you stop off, stop off when like me ooh, village um and this is something to know you know this would be another place that we could maybe connect via another highway and uh and make a home nearby a village i don't know that i really need to do that oh we got all this salmon right let's see if we can tame a cat now cat and uh parrot may not get along but that's Role play, not. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Okay, come on. Maybe he'll give me an early one. Early one, easy. He's watching us. Come on. You want some fish? No. Come on, fish. Fish, fish, fish. This is gonna be brutal. This is not the right environment at all to do this. A village like on the plains or something where you can uh, can move around is a lot easier. Now, I used to try to, like, you know, constantly stay crouched and approach them. And that seems a lot less successful than trying to get up close, then crouch and let them come back to you. If they see you, like, I think, moving around in a crouch, they get a little more feel, you know, it, this may just be, you know role play kind of kind of giving more thought to the world than it, it needs there we go hey what's up kitty now i don't know if i can get both of you guys back and this is purely role play um uh, but kitty meet birdie birdie did the, maybe it's not role play did it chase the hey no we're not gonna breed you you're just my first cat. You're a calico cat, I think. So now we got a cat. Maybe they birds on my shoulder. That would be cool. Now we got a cat and a bird to try to get home. <laughs> this is quickly getting getting insanely complex, but uh, we'll see. We'll do our best. Oh, I can hear him purring. Oh, it's wonderful. So we got a cat friend. That's cool. Um, hey. Yeah, we at least want to get a, to a night with you. So let's do this. Let's grab our coordinates. And again, I, I'm not going to bother. Oh, that was why we were getting all the lag. There was Microsoft notices of stuff that it's tried to tell me a million times before. Why I can't just stop running this check. Jungle Village... And we'll call it Jungle Spruce Village. That'll help uh, help us remember. And this is... Wow, we, we've only moved like 3,000 blocks through the jungle. Uh, 4252 by negative 3287. So yeah, we moved... Uh, just under 3,000 blocks on the X and uh, just over 1,200 blocks on the Z. So definitely some trucking. <laughs> You're done. All right, let me, uh, let me see if I can clear this notification. Maybe that'll make it chill. Clear all notifications. Now, hopefully it won't immediately go back and try to get us more. So... We've got a cat, we got a bird. We are oh I didn't uh I was gonna check the time. We are at one thirty eight. Um we haven't I don't know if that showed up for you guys, sorry. Um we haven't yet found any bamboo, we haven't rounded the whole jungle, but we've captured the coordinates and we're gonna kinda call it there and we're gonna try to skirt the edge of our jungle, keeping it a little bit in sight get back around to that desert and try to get back home with a bird and a cat without disaster. You guys down for the, the challenge? And we got to come up with a name for you, Kitty. I think Guava can be our bird because um, he, was, he was first and I love Guava. 
and I, not that I don't love you, but uh, yeah, we we just gotta come up with something else. Now, I don't want to hurt you guys or me on the bushes, uh, so we're just gonna kind of work our way down. Hey guys, um, nice to see you. Uh, oh goodness, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That was a, a scratch of the cheek, and uh, I totally clocked the mic hard of it. That was super loud. Okay, you guys with me? Kitty? All right. Rivers are going to be a real challenge here. Um, oh, good. There's a river. Um, you know, they should teleport to us like that, but not always once they get in the water. So the more narrow crossings we can find, the better. Yeah. Oh, the <laughs> the cats and I. They're worse than the wandering traders in terms of... I, I don't know why. The, the little meows just... Yeah, meow. It's what I would... Uh, what I do when I... Uh, and like I've said, I, I am... Definitely allergic to cats. Uh, you know, kind of like that hivey itchiness when I'm around. My eyes of water feel all dried out. Just uh, me and cats. But I, I, I'm a huge fan of cats. I, I don't think I would ever really want one as my own pet. But people that have them, I love them. I, I think cats more than dogs are, are probably better judges of human attitudes to animals in a, in a way judges of character uh, and I, I say that loosely you know I, I get it you may just not be down with animals animals may not be down with you and you're still a wonderful person but I think cats have a sense this is an animal person you know right off the uh, dogs are, are going to get in your face whether you like them or not you know and that's a lot of times the dog owners deal they have to um, kind of manage their dog so that, you know, if they have older relatives come over or something, you know, I, I've had, had Goldens that, you know, or get so excited when people come over, they want to jump up on them, they can knock them over and really hurt them. So, and not because, you know, it's just out of pure love and delight that they have a guest that they would ever do it. But, uh, yeah, dog, dogs don't care whether you are directly returning it or not they're going to give you affection. Cats, I think, you know, if you walk into a room, a lot of times the cat owners do this, don't worry, my cat hates everybody. And I don't know if it's, <laughs> I've often joked, it, it's one thing or the other. It's what I've just espoused, that cats will sense this is a person that genuinely likes me as an animal and uh, and I trust them more inherently. Or, this is a person who's allergic to me, and I can torment them with my presence. <laughs> and that's their motivation. I'm not always sure which one it is. Maybe it varies cat to cat. Somehow we're back into jungle again. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that, that little... I, I, in real life or here, I, I have to respond when cats make that kind of little noise. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm... I talk to them, and cats, you know, I don't say this like it's a, a a boastful thing, but whether it's because they know they're tormenting me, or whether they, they know, you know, at least to my full intent, I know I can't do this, but I'm going to try anyway. Normally it takes leads and a hole to breathe, uh, yeah, I, we can't even get close to them, uh, especially with pets around, but uh, we'll get foxes someday. It would be so nice if they just both came over here and I could hit them. Because uh, foxes like uh, uh, like pandas, which we're still looking for, and uh, another temple? Uh, we got one. All right, we've seen it. I, I don't think we're going to find awesome treasure. Uh, I'm not even going to worry about the coordinates. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, feel free to tell me if I've... If I missed something wonderful out of that. Um, because I don't know... Oh, goodness. <laughs> the danger of jungles. <laughs> Look where you're going. Um, because I don't know if if we've really come all the way up in this one, or if this is a new arm, I'm just going to kind of keep 
keep looking to see if there's any bamboo. Uh, that would certainly be a real treat. All right, Kitty, are you ready? You're going to get your first chance to impress the audience by giving me an awesome present when we sleep here tonight. Okay, so the moon's coming up. Go to sleep, and here comes Kitty. Oh, I, oh yeah. They're doing the little knee thing with their their feet where they uh, little knead your chest. Did you give me anything? No. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, they're, they're cats, and, and in a nod to what cat owners know is the that uh, uniquely feline trait of... Uh, of delivering a maybe a killed mouse or something to you as a gift. Um, the cats in Minecraft, once they've once they've been with you for a while, they'll uh, they'll bring you presents in bed. And sometimes they'll wear like a piece of string or maybe a fish. Um, and I think maybe it's somewhat dictated by whatever biome you're in. Um, but uh, they can also bring you bunnies, so like rabbit meat, or uh, rabbit skin, or rabbit feet. And rabbit feet are, in my mind, the best cat present. Um, you can hunt rabbits out in the desert, you can breed rabbits, as I've talked about. I think, I think you need to breed them for the requirement, so at least, you know, one pair of bunnies to... to uh, grow up. Uh, should we look for some more bees while we're out here? We got a little room. We don't need any of those saplings, uh, seeds or anything. Now you guys are, I can hear you, kitty. I'm a little worried that the, uh, the bird may mimic the cat. <laughs> I'll forget, uh, forget one or the other. Um, and I, I know we haven't we were deep in the jungle. I mean, we went so far. Okay, there's a bee's nest. Um, I don't think we have to... Despite all we talked about in the, the previous things, we're kind of moving. You know, if these end up being busts, that'll be a, a lesson learned down the road. If they never get occupied by bees or never start producing honey, that'll just be something we learn from. Okay. Um... And maybe, you know, we have to replace them or whatever, but uh, we we kind of want to make tracks back. And we'll have to restart our episode uh, probably pretty close to now. I don't know how much time has gone by. But, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just kind of keep moving here. Let's go down to that little sandy land bridge. <laughs> Hopefully that gets us across. Like I said, waiting for your an oh it doesn't. There's a river that goes all the way around it. Um, waiting for dogs or cats to get across the water is a little painful, but I I am uh, sometimes apprehensive that they'll slingshot to you, uh, like in the case with Salty by the the igloo. That was uh, that was a time when. He didn't just come to us. So we'll, we'll watch him. Make sure you get across. We don't want to leave you behind. Um, so we're going to need a food name for our kitty cat, too. Um, again, is that the calico? I think it's the calico, right? Get out of the water. Come on, man. we we got to make time. We're not just paddling. You know, this isn't a wading pool. Um, okay, bird cat. Good, 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 good. Uh, we'll just keep keep heading west as best we can. Oh, oh, that's... <laughs> uh, I can't, I can't help it. I, I'm not just trying to play. It just... The, it waits just long enough between to kind of let you forget. And then hits you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cough in a second here. Hang on. Oh, sorry about that. Couldn't get to the mute. I felt it coming. Did we see any other bees? Um, those are a good little bonus. Now we totally lost track of. Hmm, 
that's not just uh, just our kitty cat, but I think it's safely underground. Um, the main thing we want to do in this return, above all else, is give a very wide berth to any lava. Um, dogs and kitty cats in particular. Oh, good. Good job, guys. Good use of your slingshot skill. Um, dogs and kitty cats in particular do very badly around lava. They'll sometimes just wander into it and then catch on fire. And then tragically, they're dead right in front of your eyes. And that's why I really, you know, we may have more later. I like to get one, one name pet of the various real pet animals. Um, and get them back home and kind of keep them safe and protected. You know, then if we want to get a pack of, of wolves to uh, to guard us, and maybe we'll leave the cat outside just to give us a little creeper barrier, um, we can do that, right? They, they can serve purposes, but I hate seeing my named pets die. It's so awful. I, I don't know. It just... It's almost as bad as losing a world. Um, you know, if if any of that happens, definitely, you know, like, memorial something in the world to uh, to commemorate them, because that's, that's heart-rending. You know, anybody that's had real pets die, it's like, you know, it's like losing real people in your family. It just, you know, and it, it depends a little bit on, you know, like... I lost lots of goldfish along the way as a kid, too. I, you know, I wasn't the best uh, fish aquarium maintainer as a little boy. So, uh, not every animal is the same, but, you know, a family dog, if you only have, you know, one dog at a time, or a cat that, you know, last year's um, ferrets, or, uh, you know, it's so, you know, guinea pigs and, and rabbits and some of those kind of things to an extent. They, they vary a little bit, but uh, certainly my bias is around uh, around a, a traditional dog or cat pet, and those really, you know, becoming parts of the family, and you feel their loss. You you know, you really do grieve if, uh, if you lose it. Man, we got forever to go. Okay, let's check the time. We're in a planes. It's pretty safe. Uh, we're at 151. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here. Um, let's just go out. We'll, we'll restart the game again. I think I will be back uh, pretty quickly here for uh, for one more session to try to get us see if we can get back home again um, with our pets. Um, but yeah, we'll see how long it we let's dance. We got parrot, and the parrots will dance. Maybe it, it's sensing that um, when you have the music up, I think, or if you play the uh, the the jukebox albums, maybe is when they'll dance. They'll they'll just kind of bounce around. If you sit them uh, in an area, they'll they'll bounce around when music plays. So that's kind of cool. Uh, nice nod to the gameplay experience we've had. But let me get. Uh, get back into OBS and let me get up the thank you screen because I really do mean it when I say that I, I thank you guys for tuning in and finding me uh, however you you found this content whether you were looking for hardcore vanilla Minecraft or whether this was recommended to you um, based on, on some other content creators I hope you enjoyed uh, I hope you'll uh, spread the word or uh, or drop a comment to let me know that you've enjoyed it um, if you have any feedback things that you'd like to see or uh, you know you were a fool for uh, for skipping that second jungle temple. That was the one that had something awesome in it. I don't know. Well, you know, whatever. Uh, feel free to share your thoughts or feedback. Uh, if you are a member of the Greater Guava uh, Boosters, what's a G word for uh, for kind of a, a fan club? I don't know. Maybe I'll come up with something. Maybe we'll form it. But uh, yeah, join uh, join the Guava Club and uh and support but as always uh while i take my break take one uh you know if you're watching content make sure you uh you try to get outside stick your head out a window or uh or go take a walk night or day there's always something out there in the world that uh, nature has to show you uh, new discoveries to be made so seize that chance take care of yourselves and we'll see you back here next time for the next episode bye now